Yo, what is up, Cup Check audience? Welcome back to part two with Kyle Moore. Uh, by popular demand, we got the expert back on the show. Uh, Kyle, how are you doing today? I'm always good, man. Good to hear. Uh, so, Kyle, what kind of uh, what kind of episode did we plan out for today? Uh, we're going to talk about the draft that happened last night. Yeah, and this is always such an exciting topic. You know, so much new talent entering the league every year. And uh, we're just going to highlight three players that we liked each. And uh, Kyle's going to kind of break down some of the more uh, top prospects while I'm going to use some of my college experience to get into the nitty gritty and some of the, the later prospects. So Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm taking the top three. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. So who, who, who do you want to start us off with? Well, I, let's start with Jackson Holiday, you know, who, who went in the first – overall draft pick, uh, shortstop to the Baltimore Orioles. Um, you know, and it, 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 you know, this is a guy who's been coached by his dad, got brought up in, in major league baseball and, and knows everything about baseball. But the thing that, that just blew me away is when you actually look at the numbers of what he did, his batting average was 685. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. I, I don't care what league you're playing. You're playing a softball league. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Um, his on base percentage was 752. Three out of every four times the guy came to the plate, he was on base. Um, and in 40 games, he hit 17 home runs and 28 doubles. I mean, that is legit crushing it. And then add to that, he, he stole 30 bases. So, you know, the funny thing is, when I think about a holiday, right, I think about a guy who crushes line drives. And if you add that contact rate, you're talking about basically George Brett. OK, which is a Hall of Fame third baseman for the Kansas City Royals. And, and yeah, I mean, he's got me excited. You know, I, I I heard some people online, you know, that were saying like, oh, he's funny looking. And I, I was like, I just got hysterical because, you know, some of the best contact hitters. I mean, Wade Boggs looked like a leprechaun and Tony Gwynn looked like your third grade science teacher. But man, boy, could both of them hit. And this kid can flat hit, man. I, I don't care what you throw. He can hit. Yeah. And uh, I can't lie. Um, watching the the video of uh, Holiday give his son a hug right after he got drafted. I actually had to do a double take because uh, with that long hair, I actually thought that was maybe his wife or something. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the kid uh, definitely has a lot more maturing to do still. But, I mean, with those kind of tools, it's just ridiculous. I mean, 17 home runs in high school is no joke at all. So that's elite power, and uh, it's, it's pretty rare when you see that kind of hit tool with the speed and the power. So, uh, I think that was an easy number one pick. Uh, was that necessarily who you would have uh, believed to go number one? Yeah. Uh, you know, ironically, everybody wanted Drew Jones to go number one. I can see why, but, but no, I would, if you give me the choice, I would have taken him every, every time. Yeah. The only thing that uh, kind of confuses me is like uh, Orioles taking a shortstop. I mean, I guess with the number one pick, you have to go with the best prospects you uh, you identify out there, but uh, especially with the emergence of Gunnar Henderson, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what that team looks like down the road because uh, Orioles been stacking these these early picks for years, and uh, I think we're finally going to see it pay off in the next few years. But I, you know, half of the people that end up getting drafted at shortstop, all that tells you is that they're extremely athletic and, and gifted, talently, uh, defensively. So yeah. you can move them to second base, you can move them to third base, uh, you can even play them at, with this contact rates. You can even play them at first base. So um, my point is, he's going to hit no matter where you put him. If you put a shortstop at second base, they usually improve. Yeah, and uh, just really excited to see what happens with him. So kind of segmenting off that uh, kind of question mark of if someone will land at shortstop, I got a guy who is definitely going to stick at shortstop. Short stop. I have Ryan Ritter. Uh, this was a guy who I played with uh, in junior college, and Ryan Ritter has been getting a lot of praise. Uh, a six foot two, 200-pound, 21-year-old, shortstop who uh, played at my JUCO, Johnny Logan, and then actually transferred to Kentucky. And it looks like he really beefed up uh, at Kentucky. He slashed 283 with eight homers and 15 bags. So not the most exciting uh, hitting profile, but definitely room to grow. But the thing about Ritter is this kid might easily be the best glove in all the draft. And I really cannot um, hype up how good of a glove he has. Um, Scouts gave him a 60 grade arm and 60 grade field. And I think once people kind of start to watch him a little more uh, with the Rockies, they're going to realize that glove has a chance to be 70 or even 80 if it goes up that high. Cause I'm telling you when I was pitching with this guy behind me, it was like, it was like magic. And I'll, I'll probably play some of the clips of just what this kid can do. But um, 
just just rare rare to see someone in the field that just looks different with the glove and stands out that way. And you know, if if the question mark on him is hitting, uh, heading to Coors Field could definitely help boost that. So just really excited to see what Ryan Ritter becomes. Yeah, and, and you know, we often forget, especially in fantasy, that fielding is half the game, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, anybody who can help you defensively, and and uh, especially the pitchers in cores who who tend to get hit quite a bit. So yeah, uh, I mean, I would say like comp wise, like absolute worst. This guy is going to be on a team just because of the defensive boost he can give a team uh, when they need a sub. And at absolute best, I would see like not a switch hitter, but like a Francisco Lindor uh, type is going to have decent hit tool with a really plus uh, glove. So. Uh, very happy Ryan Ritter went in the fourth round at pick 116. So who do you have for us next? Well, I, again, I, I just went, went chalk here, but, uh, Drew Jones, right. Who was, who was supposed to be the number one overall pick, uh, for good reason. He's, he's Andrew Jones's kid. We all know, uh, he was a, you know, gold glove center fielder for the, uh, the Atlanta Braves, uh, borderline hall of famer, perennial all-star, um, exceptional defensive center fielder. And apparently so is his son um that's half of his his makeup he's also a good hitter and he's got great speed so you know you put those things together uh you're talking about the Arizona Diamondbacks are now going to have an outfield of the future with Alec Thomas Corbin Carroll and and uh, Drew Jones I mean that's that's pretty talented yeah Um, you know he hit 570 Uh, again that's way above you know what most really good contact profile hitters hit um his OBP was 675 which means he draws bases too um 13 homers and seven doubles. Now that was where he lost me a little bit. So again, that's where I look at Jackson holiday and say, this kid's pounding line drives. Whereas Drew, Drew Jones, you know, had to, had to get a little bit of launch angle on it to get it out over the, the fence, but he also stole 32 bases. So he's got great wheels and apparently he's an epic uh, defensive outfielder. So he'll, he'll move quickly through the minors and, and he'll, he'll add that hit tool with the contact rates, um, you know, at the next level. But the other thing that was really kind of funny is he, he went 10 and one as a starting pitcher too. And, and, you know, that didn't get talked about a whole lot, but that's, that's pretty good. I don't yeah. think they'll use pitcher in the minors, but it, it does lend itself to how athletically talented that kid is. Yeah. And that's no joke. And that's definitely a guy uh, I'm sure we'll see highlights of they're in a blowout and they throw him into pitch and uh, the kid just absolutely lights it up. Uh, not necessarily show hay level, but it's always good to see uh, just immense athleticism out of a top pick. Uh, so also, uh, segmenting on, uh, the Jones kid, uh, I know this is a hill that I'm ready to die on and me and you fundamentally disagree with probably this is a different video, but I think the father should have been in the hall of fame. I think there's an argument you can make. Um, but yeah, (laughs) obviously didn't make it in sadly. I, I, I liked him. He, uh, but he wasn't, he's the hall of really, really good. And as far as I'm concerned, if Dale Murphy's not in the hall of fame, uh, Andrew Jones doesn't belong there either. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think he's a really good ball player. I'd love to have him on the Cardinals uh, here in St. Louis. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there are a number of players that are like that, that are just, you know, they're really good, but they're not quite Hall of Famers when you look at the at the numbers. Yeah, he's fair very- enough. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. I mean, the MLB is definitely a lot stricter than either the NFL or uh, NBA when it comes to that. So moving on to my next prospect to highlight, I want to talk about Jace Jung. Uh, this is a guy I'm really excited to talk about. I mean, uh, we've obviously seen great things from his brother. So just, uh, just a really good family. And I'm excited to see what happens with uh, Jace. So he is, he's currently six foot, 205 pounds, so not the biggest build, but he is currently a second baseman drafted out of Texas tech, 21 years old. Uh, Jace hit 14 homers with a 335 average and a 481 on base percentage. And what really stood out, stood out about this kid is 59 walks to only 42 strikeouts. So I think this is a guy who's going to have a very good um, hit tool and eye, and hopefully we can see him move up the levels pretty quick. Uh, uh, other things to note, he had 60-grade power and 60-grade hit, and he went 12th overall to the Tigers. So not the most ideal spot to, to land, but uh, can't be mad at going 12th overall ever. <laughs> No. And, and I really like his older brother, Josh. Uh, I, I, you know that, I mean, I'm, I'm one of them. He's one of them I've preached. I mean, he's just had horribly bad luck with injuries, but uh, is an exceptional hitter. So yeah, I mean, uh, you, you show me that family. I'm, I'm happy to draft their, their sons. Okay. So now that we're done talking about Jace Jung, we're going to be moving on to Kyle's final prospect to talk about. So Kyle, who you got for us? 
Well, I, and number 30 pick was, was Kumar Rocker. And, and everybody knows who he is from last year. Um, another kid who had bad luck, right? I mean, he, he injures his shoulder. The Mets let him go. Uh, he, he goes to the independent league, you know, and, and now he's out in the wild. I mean, shoulders are bad. We all know that. If you pitch, you, shoulders are bad. Elbows are okay, right? Um, as far as those go. But, I mean, this is a kid who they got picked up by the Texas Rangers with the third overall pick. So he joins lighter, right, in Texas, and they get that old Vanderbilt uh, twosome back together. I, th- I thought it was a great pick. I really do. At Vanderbilt, they, you know, they destroyed it together. And he, uh, he went 28-10 and 10 over his time there. Uh, he had 13.2 Ks per nine innings and a 2.89 ERA for college, um, left his, after his junior year. But he played in the independent league. And so the question was, you know, would he heal? Would he come back healthy? And so – You know, he's only played uh, uh, five games since he came back, but he's got 32 Ks and 20 innings pitched. Um, He had a 1.35 ERA, so he was destroying the independent league. And he's hitting 99 miles an hour on the gun again. So, you know, that's the most important aspect when you look at it is, is, is his shoulder healthy. And when you're doing that, the answer is yes. So, you know, for a team that really struggles to get good pitching in Texas, uh, having him in lighter is really going to help their future. Yeah. And, you know, I was just really excited to see that um, a team went so early on him because I think he got wronged by the Mets last year. Um, I mean, you just hate to see it. You have such a great college season and then uh, have some unknown. And but, you know, uh, when you're that good, they find you. And uh, just, just definitely interesting to see that he went that high. I know a lot of lists had him going as far as like the third round to like mid to late first. So I feel like people didn't really know what MLB teams were going to do with him, but uh, definitely a top three talent in the draft. I would say um, when, when he's healthy and good, he's just as good as anybody and, and probably a guy with enough experience already uh, where he's going to move up the minor leagues pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause he's not a kid. Right. And, and, you know, so he's been drafted in the top 10 in the last two years. Yeah. That tells you the talent that he is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. And uh, moving on to our last uh, draft prospect to talk about, I have Mark Schallenberger, who uh, he is a friend of the show and he is currently in my 10 team dynasty league. And uh, we're just so proud of Mark. Uh, He was on the draft board this year, Um, sadly did not go. So I'm going to call him the biggest snub of the draft. Uh, I think teams definitely Missed an opportunity to take this kid. Uh, Marky is 6'2", 215, 22 years old. So kind of on the older side of the prospects, but that's what you get from uh, kind of like three or four year college guys. Uh, but interesting things to point out about Mark. Um, at Evansville, he hit 334 with a 444 on base and actually had a perfectly even walk to strikeout ratio at 32 walks and 32 Ks uh, while also hitting 11 homers. So uh, just knowing Mark, uh, we're just very excited that, uh, you know, he had a, he had a chance to be picked and uh, we'll have to keep an eye out to see if he gets picked next year or if he becomes a free agent signing, but some other things that uh, to highlight about Mark, he actually is very high IQ and got a 34 on his ACT. And he's also a very high energy team guy. Um, an interesting stat to point out. So uh, the Evansville Aces, who he played for, were three and ten before he started hitting leadoff, and then after they were twenty nine and fourteen once he moved to leadoff. So uh, you know, as a guy who's grown up around uh, around Mark, playing with him, I know he brings a lot of energy to his team and uh, played him this year, and it did not go too well for the Butler Bulldogs. Uh, I'm pretty sure Mark told me he was going to have five hits before the game, and he had four, uh, went four for five with a bomb, and uh, I think he almost had the cycle. But uh, ending off our video, I'm going to give out the cup check scouting grades on Mark because uh, the MLB did not give them to him. So I've, I've been – this might be a little generous. I'm not the um, expert on hitting grades, but this is just uh, – from my knowledge of seeing him play, I got a 60 grade hit tool, very high IQ in the box. I gave him 50 grade power, uh, 40 grade run. So uh, not the fastest guy, but interestingly enough, was able to hold down center field for the aces this year. And uh, I gave him a 60 arm because he's hit 91, 92 on the mound before. So has a decent arm from the outfield, I would assume, with like a crow hop. And uh, fielding, gave him a 50. He's very versatile, uh, played all over. He can play first. 
any of the outfields and you could probably even pitch if you're really desperate for it. And overall I gave him a 55. So definitely a guy to keep an eye out. Um, just, just really excited to see someone in my own fantasy league uh, have such great success and have a chance at playing at the next level. Yeah. Anybody with that high of an OBP. Uh, yeah. He needs to be hitting at the top of the order. Yeah. I mean, 32 walks, 32 K's definitely a tough AB every time you see Mark Schauenberger and that's going to do it for our MLB draft video. Uh, thank you all for watching and a big thank you to Kyle Moore for hopping back on to talk some baseball with us. Uh, make sure to check out the Instagram and YouTube or <laughs> Instagram and TikTok link in the bio, especially the TikTok. If you want to see some of the clips of some of these players actually playing. So thank you all for watching. Have a good one.